Am I audible now? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Yeah, we can hear you. So those who are traveling or not able to switch on the camera, it's perfectly fine. Just relax. Make sure that you are seated in a comfortable position. The awareness remains as it is. It is never lost. At time it feels that one has lost awareness. And that usually happens when we feel that we have lost ourselves to thinking. But even the thinking is made up of awareness. Every experience is made of pure knowing. which is the beingness. And the beingness is the place of rest and calm. We never lose it because it is the ground of all experiential awareness. Without beingness, even the person cannot arise. But beingness can be without the person. Which is evident from the experience of deep sleep. Where beingness remains in its pristine state. pure state, untouched by mind or senses.
the suffering comes from the illusion that we have lost awareness. But we can never lose it because we never gained it. It was always there. The very ability to perceive comes from it. It is only when we get caught up in the content where we experience emotions feelings, sensations and where we label them as good sensations and bad sensations, good feelings, bad feelings. That is where we think that we are separate. The root of all illusions is the belief in separateness. The character that arises is a part of that illusion. And the character first tries to find happiness in external objects, in events, in people, relationships, friendships, accumulation of material possessions and so on and so forth. And the person also claims that he or she is happy. But there is a void. But there is this emptiness which haunts. And the person continuously seeks solution to end that. When the grace happens, and the awareness dawns of our true nature, the life of the character actually becomes hard. And the character complains that I was expecting relief that I was happy earlier, but now I am seeking and I feel more miserable. The thing is that the glimpse of the truth, those who have seen it, is so magnanimous, is so blissful, that one is willing to undertake all suffering in life to be there, to be in that, to be as that. It does not matter what happens to the mind or body. The movement is continuously towards the source. The yearning for truth 
is so strong that one finds themselves pulled and even if they resist even if the suffering happens they cannot stop Up to a point, the seeker runs after experiences. And all experiences give relief, but that relief is temporary. At some point, the source shines light, bright light, and it becomes obvious that that space where everything was being seen, perceived, as experience is the only reality. Is the unchanging presence, the unaffected witness of the phenomenal world. And that the person is merely a reflection. And that brings a very powerful insight, which is, I am not the body. I have lived my entire life with this core belief that I am the body. And it has brought nothing but suffering. But now it is known that I am the witness which remains unaffected and is never in separation with what is being witnessed. That I am is the pure knowing. What creates suffering is the sense of separateness and the personal identification or the ego that claims that all its actions are its own doing. Immersed in doership We forget the love. Because the ego's mind
only agenda is to perpetuate itself. But the destiny of the wave in the ocean is not to become a bigger wave. The bigger you become, the more suffering you experience in the world. More clashes you experience with others. The destiny of the wave is to merge with the ocean. The nature of ocean is water. Whether it shows as a huge body or it shows as a drop. Similarly, what powers everything is consciousness. It is not to be known as an objective experience. The only way to know it is to be it. The being is consciousness and consciousness is bliss. This is what the scriptures say. Sat Chit Ananda. This bliss is not the temporary bliss that the objects of the world offer. This bliss, as Ramana Maharishi said, is your very natural state. It is not the euphoric highs that we seek or the lowest of lows that we cling on to. It is the most natural state which is our direct experience in deep sleep. Once the recognition of awareness happens, Once the being is known for what it is, that presence begins to grow within us. And even during the flow of life, even during the movements, that presence remains. That awareness shines. So even while engaging with the world, we remain detached. And that detachment is peace.
okay we can take the questions now questions or if you would like to share something you can raise your hand and i will unmute you Yes, Rajiv. Hello. Hi, Rajiv. Hey, hi, Jagjot. How are you? I'm very fine. How are you? Oh, absolutely fine. Hey, so lovely to hear your talk. Thank you. And so lovely to see you too. Uh, can, can I uh, can I just ask a few questions? Yes, sure, please. Uh, Jagjot, as you rightly said. Awareness is what we are. Yes. So as we get into that realization, you one starts becoming so present to the present moment that you lose pretty other perspectives. So, so you know, that's the state. Uh, this I, I am now started calling this self as a body-mind instrument. <laughs> <laughs> So even the vocabulary changes. So right. I just want to, uh, sh I probably you, this is more like a sharing of experience. So when one becomes so available to the present moment, just for the purpose of conversation, I'm using the word I, mm. I, uh, I am reaching a stage or have been in a thoughtless awareness stage where there are no thoughts or practically one or two random thoughts. But this is also making this body-mind uh, instrument very sensitive. Yes. Because your awareness, I don't know. So this this little new, so I wanted to ask you, are you having some similar experiences? Because mm -hmm. I've started becoming very sensitive to energies, what people say, you can realize. Yes. So these, these are some, you know, uncharted areas now. Yeah, yeah. Actually, now, since the awareness has dawned, you are able to fully experience your humanness. You know? Yes, yes. I would say I'm becoming a human now. Yes. I was just a sophisticated animal. <laughs> <laughs> and not just that, we were very selective in our approach. You know, we want to feel this, we don't want to feel that. We want this, we don't want that. That begins to fade away with awareness. And I would say that, you know, it, it so happens that one starts to experience emotions in full intensity. Yes, not, that's so not true. Just the, yeah. Not just the pleasant emotions, even the negative emotions. No, no, it's very raw. Yes. <laughs> it's very raw. <laughs> it's very raw. <laughs> and I think it sorry, is... Sorry, I'm coming in between. Uh, I, have, I am falling sick now when I, you know, when I meet that raw energy. Yeah. If yeah. someone negative comes, I fall sick. So I'm not, so, you know, something's yes. happening that. So, yes, it happens because you see, Rajiv, there's a lot of stuff that has been, that had been buried in the mm. past, right? Mm. Mm. So, all of that conditioning, you know, when it comes to the surface, it is bound to create some turbulence, right? Mm. I mean, I have, myself, I have been in bed most of the times uh, during that stage and uh, there was lack of energy, and sometimes a withdrawal also would happen. But you see, slowly, slowly, it normalizes. And as I said, that, you know, um, we have this tendency to seek the euphoric highs. And sometimes we even get, uh, you know, we even cling on to the lowest of lows. Even that happens, you know. Because now we are not differentiating between anything. We are just experiencing it as raw sensations. So we want to feel it fully. The awareness as the awareness, it, it it is like it is allowing everything to emerge in that space. And yes, sometimes it is a bit taxing on the body. It is a bit mm. draining on the mind. It is. Mm. But eventually, you will return to your normal state, to your natural state. That is bound to happen because 
you can never stay in that zone for long and with the you know with the with this experience repeatedly happening you will get to see the illusoriness of that low feelings or the high feelings whatever you experience you will see that that intensity is not going to break you that recognition is going to happen that intensity cannot break you because you are that intensity even you yes, are yes. Ma made up of that absolutely so, you are very true yes yes in yes. fact what i find is that if we try not to feel it if we offer resistance to the experience it is then that the experience becomes more uncomfortable and the suffering prolongs you know it continues in horizontal time because no no you are very true you are very in fact i can now physically feel you know few feet away from my body ki bhai yaar yahan pe main usko rok raha hu yes so when then no no what's up you are true i is <laughs> lot of stuff happening you know you get so sensitive not just to your own energy but to other people's energy yes 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 i mean people who are sitting maybe a couple of feet away from you you can sense what's going on it so you know the boundaries become blurred very true very true yeah. very true very so, true i have yeah very true and i you know i just say that you just you know be your normal self be your usual self and allow that to happen and slowly you know one does come back to that normal natural state where one does not get too preoccupied with that you know yes yes absolutely true on that what you're saying is true jagjit you are absolutely true uh, that yes that i have understood so it's mostly i'm just quiet and such forum comes i love to talk on these topics <laughs> there is actually nothing to be done this is what the, this is what the message says because anything you try to do actually perpetuates the whole sensation the feelings so it's like when you are completely silent all the answers come so true and again i mean they, we are not offering any resistance to anything so we are allowing everything to be the way it is you know whatever thought comes let it come let it play it's beautiful yes yes very true very true and there is an immense sense of detachment yes yes in fact we don't have to do anything to detach ourselves even yeah that's i was just going to say i mean you don't you're not even doing any act of detachment it is just yeah. you just you no long but i actually also physically feel now my energies are not attached anywhere yeah yeah it happens like that and you know sometimes for others they may feel that you know this they may see this detachment as a threat they may see they yes, may feel yes, that yes. this person is moving away from us but yes, yes, that's yes. not the case it's like that you know we become so restful in our own energy and we are so relaxed and we generally do not respond um to the triggers which we had earlier <laughs> right and with our calming energy we actually make the other person also relaxed so it is That's not true. so this is not like you know we are trying to move away from a family life or from our loved ones it is like on the contrary i would say that we are now becoming actually more present to them we are actually becoming more available to them we are becoming more compassionate to them because now we are sensitive sensitivity means it's not the ego sensitivity it is the mm. it is the sensitivity innate, where, innate mm. sense there is an innate sense of sensitivity yes so when we are like for example when with, when i am with my child you know with my children i am so completely immersed with them that i just don't think about what's on the phone or what's on the television or who is coming or going i am just present there with my children or with my wife or with any other person even with you i am having this interaction lots of things are going on around but my presence my my awareness is totally with you yes what yes so true so i i feel that this again is a is the grace that we have learned to become sensitive and when you know we have accepted our sensitivity and i feel it is not a weakness it is a strength no no true so true in fact i've stopped using adjectives yeah 
I don't need adjectives. Everything is one. I, I just wanted to because like I, I could sense your vibrations. There is peace and silence within you. So I could connect. Mm -hmm. As I'm finding it difficult to connect with, you know, some funny people also. Because <laughs> you realize they have not touched the depths. But the other thing, Jagjot, is your true awareness. And it's like sleep. You cannot catch sleep. You have to just immerse. But there's also this... I hope I'm not taking a little more time. Are there more questioners? It's okay. You can continue. We'll, we'll attend. No, please let me know. The other thing yeah. is, one also realizes that there's a huge depth and that depth is pulling you deeper. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. that part, though I wouldn't say the, I mean, yes, I wouldn't say ego is nil. So that discerning, that going into the depth is the pull from the depth or I couldn't say it's a need of my ego because ego is getting nullified further. Yeah. So there is a pull pull from that depth. And there is also some deeper realization that there are higher levels of consciousness. Yes. There are, you know, I feel yes. we are the fourth level, there are more. So, but quantifying it or wanting, now when I go into meditation, uh, not bringing any image, because if I bring the images of the deities, I am sure they will... Do because I'm realizing the universal mind. Once the individual mind annihilates, then you assign with the cosmic mind. That's extremely powerful because yes. the universe is a creation of the universal mind. Yes, true, true. So, In you fact, know, those are, I can sense now, actually, I'm afraid if I, if I meditate on Shiva, I'll see him and I'll die. Because <laughs> <laughs> the energy is too high, I can sense. So, you know, true, these, true. these are funny and... things. In that death is the liberation. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah you that's... see, the the way this message uh, propagates is like this: that whatever higher levels of consciousness that we see, mm. but in, at the end, they are all experiences, and all experiences so yeah, are yeah, in yeah. the realm of the mind. Yes, but yes, that's at some true. point the experiences also drop. And perhaps that is what can be symbolized as death, right? When the experiences so true, so drop. True, so true, so true. And that is a very natural, very ordinary state. Ramana Maharishi would call that that is your natural state. So he says, Ramana Maharishi says that the your head is already in the tiger's mouth. You know, the source yeah, yeah. is already pulling you even if the ego tries to resist, it cannot resist. The, no, that's true. It is the destiny of the wave to uh, destiny of the wave to merge with the ocean. Do whatever the wave can try its level best to try, uh, you know, try the best of practices, the best of methods. But ultimately, the liberation is merging with the source, which is the ocean. That's it. So there is nothing to be done as such. And definitely, you know, the experience of higher consciousness comes as the mind becomes more and more peaceful. One actually, one experiences more and more peace. Yes, yes. That's the, what I call my internal GPS. Yeah. <laughs> the more peaceful I feel, I know I'm on the right track. Rather, sorry, I'm using the word I. This form is on the track. No, it's okay. In communication, we can do that. It's not a problem. Okay. So I guess we can... Take... Just one small, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry. One more thing, Jagjit, you, I, I read somewhere you had written a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe later on. Can you suggest where you got it uh, written or published? Because some thoughts and poems are coming through me, which is so strange because I'm an engineer, so logically driven, I don't know where, but I'm writing it down. So I okay. just wanted to ask you later on, maybe if you could share. Sure. You know, you can send me an email and I will give you all the information in that. Oh, so sweet. Your email ID is there? Yes, yes. It is there on my website on the contact okay. page. I'll right? do that. I'll do that. Yeah. Thank you so okay, much. Mike. God bless you. Yeah, yeah, Thank thanks. you. Okay, Nitin. <clears throat> yes, Nitin. Hello, Jagdish. Hello, Nitin. How are you? I'm fine, Jack. How are you? I'm very fine. Tell me. So, uh, it it's uh, been quite a, uh, I think, few weeks I've started uh, listening to you. And it's quite calming. 
and uh, i really uh, find your talks uh, uh, meaningful and can relate to it so <clears throat> as far as i am concerned i have uh, uh, been reading about uh, the non duality on kora from teja anand and that is where i and got the concept like okay what is it about and eventually uh, i find it uh, uh, meaningful so only thing is that uh, i just wanted to understand from you is that when we are talking about meditation and looking it from the perspective of awareness that uh, everything is just rising and falling in that awareness but uh, uh, can you please elaborate on that what does the meditation reveals about our mind eventually the question arises because we see that it's a endless content and yes. it is changing content and new content gets added yes. and the previous and generally the pattern is that it is uh, the same kind of thing is going on for a period of time that yes. we can see yes. so what does meditation reveal about the content and so that the content gets dropped yeah yeah eventually the purpose is that it gets dropped or detached something right but till the time it is in loop we can assume that it is not dropped or detached uh, or it is still going around right so effectively uh, the if meditation reveals something because it's a, well, the only question comes is it's endless content and new yes. things get added then how med- meditation can help us to realize the untruth or worthlessness of this content right so you see what is meditation right now generally what happens is that we have reduced meditation to a practice and that is fine i mean i'm there's nothing against it in fact i also do meditation regularly but one has to understand the concept first as to why are we meditating what is it that we want really and uh, you know there was a time i spoke to teja mm-hmm. and he asked me the same question what are, what do you want exactly what is it that you are looking for let's say you are meditating and you have been told that it will make you see something right but what is it that you're trying to achieve and what is that going to be permanent in your life or is there something else to it and the answer was that i don't really know i don't really know what i'm trying to achieve with meditation so what my experience says is that true meditation happens when the meditator dissolves when the meditator completely vanishes the one who is trying to seek something so true meditation is actually end of seeking when it is completely understood that life has to be accepted in its natural flow then by itself in that acceptance the identification with right and wrong begins to loosen up it begins to dissolve that is when the identification with the content begins to dissolve if i'm trying mm. to push away one content you know there is some content which i don't like and i'm trying to push it away right there is other content that i like and i want it these both they appear to be forces in opposite direction but they are in the same direction mm. what you averse you are getting attached to also so the thing is that this life itself becomes a meditation once it is understood that there is actually no separation with anything and your own experience will show you this it is not that you have to do something to realize this you may have seen that when you get you know when you get identified with a particular belief it causes suffering right now identification by itself is not wrong as such it is not the problem the problem is the grasping of a belief that this is my core belief and this is what i am if i say i am the body right 
and this is my core belief and i say that i am the body and nothing can change my mind then what will happen then i will suffer when the body suffers you know when the body is in pain i will suffer with it but when i recognize that everything is a movement you know and how i know that everything is a movement now this is difficult to explain on uh, conceptually intellectually but you see your very nature is stillness because the movement has been identified mm-hmm. otherwise if you were movement only the movement you would have never known if you were only the mind you would have never known that there is a mind there mm-hmm. is a light the light of the pure witness the witness that remains unaffected by anything in that the movement or the arising of mind is seen so this continuous experience of mind expanding and coming back to its restful state this will happen continuously in meditation in meditation the emotions will come up you will feel the sensations mm-hmm. you will see the movement happening towards thinking okay right i did this that day mm-hmm. i should not have done this you know and you will see that how these beliefs are creating guilt how they are creating mm-hmm. feelings of shame unworthiness you know and then you form an association that it is because i have these core beliefs within me they are deep within my conscious subconscious but when you know that these are only sensations these are only the thoughts are basically it's just it's just an arising because you are the space which illumines everything then very naturally that detachment starts to take take place so you know it is not that there is any particular practice of meditation that can help with that but yes meditation is generally good for calming the mind right you can sit in meditation it calms the mind and in that uh, you know that will give you a space to inquire okay. with an agitated mind you know when you are identified with the flow your inquiry will never be sincere mm. you know right. you will constantly question you will say that but it is this there mm. are wars there is violence there is this there is that mm. right you're continuously identified with the flow and you're trying to find a solution you're trying to find in other words you're trying to find stillness in the movement <clears throat> this knowledge itself will bring you back to stillness so you know um, what like from my personal experience i say bring yourself back to this beingness mm. this is don't have to do it vigilantly don't have to do it as a practice whenever you see the movement happening the very seeing of that movement brings you back to stillness nothing is to be done so in fact you know this concept frees you from all practices you don't have to give any time because time itself is an inference which is born of thought so time does not have solution <laughs> right. and i have seen uh, seen this i think in a when a book i forgot the name of the author the headless uh had the space something okay. okay so he also has some youtube videos where he he is just having a head cam and driving a cycle and he says that everything happens in this arena sand so you can usually see that you can see your legs hands and everything but that again happens inside this uh, yeah. headless awareness so yes agree Okay. So, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Okay, Nathan. Thank you. Okay, anyone else would like to ask something? We have a couple of more minutes. We can take one or two more questions or you can share anything. Sometimes share is like more powerful. I would like to say something. Yes, hi Adrian. Like hi there. Um, How are you? And, uh, Seeing you after a long time. Huh? Yes, I'm, I'm in Sri Lanka at the moment and oh, okay. uh, for a while. And I've been reading some of your your links on YouTube. Um okay. I just want to touch base on a 
couple of things I heard today, and I think they're very important what I've heard. Um, I, I'm kind of tracing things back in terms of um, why, how we lose our innocence, if you like. Uh, and I think I've been, well, I've been following, you probably have heard of Dr. Gabor Mate, who is yes, uh, yes. a Canadian. Yeah. Uh, he's written some very good books. And he gets into the, and he's quite renowned actually, yeah. and how as children we pick up uh, a lot of negativity and and uh, 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 from from the outside, and no two children are the same. Each one's experiences of their family background are different, yeah, and that's very striking. And and to know why we are. In a state of 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 depression, anxiety, when we when we uh, when we uh, grow up, yeah, uh, why we and uh, and the other thing was, you know, um, I find that at the moment I, I feel that I am in a spiritual meltdown, which uh, which uh, and uh, <clears throat> and facing. And facing the shadow, as 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 I as I know it, is has a painful experience yes. because of the slipping in and out of these states. Um, um, and um, I think your previous scholar, the one before that, had mentioned that, and I think you mentioned it as well about how emotions and feelings come up, yeah, which probably didn't even know you had that I didn't even know I had and to bring them rather than push them aside into consciousness yeah kind of draw them into consciousness in a very compassionate way and then of course that intensity the, the pain the pain of 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 the ex, of the feelings seem to subside when they're when when we are in that space, yes. uh, when you bring them into uh, the, the the space of consciousness, um, uh, I mean that's you know that takes a lot of practice. Well, at, at, I think at the beginning it might take a lot of practice, but as you were saying, to meditate in the natural state of flow. Which uh, um, uh, I was speaking up from what you were saying. Why is meditation? You know, meditation is for helping the mind, but really, you know, the the point is to to be in the natural state of flow. That is the meditation, yeah. where where uh, uh, you can be in a sense connected to your authentic self to your authentic self um yeah and and i suppose the trouble is i'm having this constant you know in and out of these states and and i kind of thinking you know you know as dr gabriel martin was saying you know whenever a feeling comes up that is try and you know when did you first experience this? And it's kind of going back to a time. What is a feeling? What is the feeling like? He speaks of trauma. Yeah. And he says the trauma is not what happens outside, it's what it's the explosion that happens within you hmm. that you that you carry with you into, into you know, as you get older. Hmm. Uh, so and um, and I think coming from a place where, yeah, you know. Being in a state of trauma, uh, state, uh, from in and out, it it is very difficult to kind of uh, 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 because my tendency is to slip back into the I forget what you use into into a state of mind, right, right, in, into the personhood, into being a person mm -hmm. rather than you know staying where you are in the natural flow of things. Sometimes I get a bit confused about the language here and how to use it because I've read so much of people's views on on the language. So yeah, the, so 
the 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 spiritual meltdown you know that is taking its time it yeah. seems like it's taking its time and i think it's and i think sort of it's very universal yeah yeah to mainly everyone to some degree or the other yes yes and and one feels very alone very disconnected and one looking for validation outside love outside to fill up something that is lacking or seems to be not not that it's lacking it seems to be lacking within yeah 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 uh, yeah it is very true you know and this this phase is actually called the flip flop or you know the dark night of the soul and it is there i mean it is there and it can be quite debilitating can you hear me yes i can uh, yeah, yeah yeah i can so hey. this can be actually quite debilitating and now i can speak from my own experience like what happened through my phases of this so initially my whole seeking was basically to find knowledge right to find knowledge to bring an end to this but at some point adrian it failed i i thought that knowledge alone is limited in this because knowledge is of the mind right now it is not that we we can dig each and every aspect of our childhood and you know bring all that memories back even if we do the trauma response still may continue but in spiritual world what happens is that you know when you get this glimpse of yourself as the awareness you simply accept the flow in the natural way it is so what happens that even today sometimes i do get triggered right because of something in the past some emotion comes up but again what i'm doing is that now i'm not frantically trying to find a solution to it so i am not going to youtube i am not going to google or typing or oh, feeling like this how to avoid this or maybe watch a video to calm myself that i may watch it later later i may watch something out of interest but at that moment i am being present to that particular emotion with complete intensity and i am simply seeing what is arising whatever is arising now what happens is that a natural detachment takes place in that process you see that the person and all the arising which is happening they are connected they are not separate it is not happening to a, to the person the person is the feeling the person is the emotion but yet there is an awareness where everything every this everything is coming into place then what happens is that you stop judging yourself or stop blaming yourself for you know whatever has shown up so even afterwards even when they when the intensity the feeling has dropped and you know you are relatively relaxed you don't uh, pursue it as such you don't you don't find a solution you you see it as an arising and that slowly you know that is where this awareness slowly begins to dawn or the presence slowly begins to increase so as to speak you know i mean you remain in that restful state so it does happen and it also happens like this that at some point you cannot control the mind right you do frantically starts looking for a solution you do find we do find ourselves in that situation also and there's nothing wrong with it i allow that also you know now i don't get that tendency those urges but i used to allow it and through that experience i could see that none of it is helping me you know maybe let's say i i was in a romantic situation with some person and they did not reciprocate the way i wanted them to reciprocate okay then i am going on the google and trying to find red flags and <laughs> this and that you know all that is the defense mechanism which my mind is using to avoid anxiety 
it just wants to avoid anxiety. So it's trying to find out that information, you know, let me find this information. Maybe I'll feel relief. So if on the, on the internet, it says that if that person is acting like this, then maybe they are toxic or narcissistic or this or that, then that sort of gives me a temporary relief. But you see, again, the feelings come back, you know, and now, even if I believe that the other person was toxic, I still find myself restless. I still find myself anxious. So in the end, there was no option for me other than to embrace that anxiousness, that feeling. Once I learned to embrace that feeling, it lost its power. It just lost its power. So I stopped reading books. I stopped listening to, um, you know, I stopped list, uh, listening to videos or podcasts that were explaining how to get over it. I st started embracing it. I started accepting the nature of this apparent character which is showing up because I was subjected to a certain conditioning over which I had no control. The source decided the conditioning and the source itself is going to take care of it. If I allow things to happen the way they are, I free myself. Now, again, it does not mean that we should not go to therapy or that we should not seek help. That's not what I'm saying. By all means, seek whatever help is required in a particular situation. But at the end of the day, you know, we have to find what is resisting us to go within and face, you know, face whatever is arising. It's the it's the experience, isn't it? That is the explosion yes. inside. Yes, that needs to be that needs to be brought into the light, or rather, into consciousness. Yes, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it is like we are so ex, uh, so scared of the explosion that we don't want to face it. We don't want to see it, right? Yes. But if we allow it to just emerge, I mean, this is something you know we can do in in a bit of isolation. We don't have to be around any anyone else but we can sit quietly mm. and observe what is happening and that may yes. be the most uncomfortable i mean i personally speaking for me it was the most uncomfortable thing and it continued for years but then at some point you know the identification with th thoughts with thinking began to dissolve yeah and then you know all that concerned began dropping and when that identification dissolved and that 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 concern with you know what will happen what uh, you know how will i react this and that all that concern begins to drop you naturally find yourself at peace it's interesting what well, just very quickly it's interesting you're saying that if you, you talked about relationships if there's something that you want from the other person and you haven't heard and then and you build up a you become quite angry and 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 well you're angered at this the, nothing has been reciprocated and then the next time the person sends you a message it's almost as if all that anger vanishes yeah. and as you were saying temporary and then yeah. it stays for a while and then late, about half an hour later again you are looking or i'm looking for this calmness and only you that person can can calm you down yeah, uh, yeah that's a that's a very uh, destructive state to be in because that is the case you're constantly one your your life is not yours yes. or one's life is not theirs you'll be constantly searching out yeah so that's thank you for that uh for that uh, that advice uh been very helpful and encouraging thank you Adrian. Okay, we'll... Yes, Rajiv. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Jagjota, I just came in again. Yeah, yeah, sure. There, uh, there is just one question I wanted to ask you. As we uh, stabilize more in awareness, one realizes that everything is a happening. Yeah. Even this conversation, life is a happening. Then why is it that awareness is still localized to this body. 
why does that still happen you know i'll tell you it is localized to the body only when you think about it you know you are you are separate only when you think about your separation otherwise if you notice it is not your continuous state for example in this talk you know while we were interacting how many times did you think about yourself as i the rajiv am saying this saying that it is all happening spontaneously but what happens is that the moment some emotion comes up or something you know which has a little bit of an intensity it produces the pseudo subject me or i it is by nature it is by design because without that communication cannot happen so to communicate we need this separation in the phenomenality but the thing is the awareness that lights your eye and my eye that is the same awareness in other words the eye is same it is not different but it gives an impression as if there is a separation in deep sleep you don't experience it in deep sleep there is no separation with anything at all but the moment we wake up it again comes up so it is by design and when seen it in that way that the i comes up and it is it should be allowed to come up there is no blocking it then you are at peace no no yes you are absolutely true uh, you are saying this interaction is cause and effect yes yeah Th that that's that is what uh, is just that um, I, i wouldn't say i'm trying to wrap my head it's just these are very new phenomenons Yeah. Uh, one is not present in the body but one still is aware that one is all this is happening this hand is moving this mouth words are also yes. i i realize even words are alive yeah only those words that reflect our innate nature only that can come from our mouth yeah everything is alive emotions are yes. alive thoughts are alive everything is alive yes so that was only my one question why is awareness Uh, still localized probably you answered it little bit but is yeah. that uh, a more philosophical is that what they say in nirvikalpa samadhi and sarvikalpa samadhi because yeah. even ram krishna paramhans said one has one will have remnants of ego which yes. is kept there so that this body still has some experience yeah yeah so the thing is that ego is not to be killed ego is no, not no, to be absolutely yeah. it's needed to navigate this it's, world it's yeah it's needed to and that is why that sense of localization is there ah. but you, yeah that is why that sense of localization is there otherwise you know how would you know let's say if you are hungry if you are famished how would you know no, so, sorry jagjo i'm just coming in between yeah. so uh, there is this another um, uh, person i follow so she says that when people go into those state they lose even control over their body functions uh, yes that can happen is, is that yes. what uh, okay okay that can that can also happen but again you know uh, that's that's a separate phenomena it can happen like that some people you know can lose control but again the 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 very sense of localization has been given to us for the purpose of self preservation for the purpose of interaction right otherwise you know while crossing the road if i am not aware of my localization i may get hit by a vehicle a moving vehicle so it is there for a purpose yes. the only thing is when it expands horizontally i am this i am that i am spiritual i am religious i am business person i my this is my stature this is my life this is the way my life should be this is the way my life should not be that is the continuation of the ego mind or the thinking mind which creates the problem so i would say that this is by design there's nothing wrong in it as such even you know ramesh balsekar uh, gave yeah, an yeah, example yeah. mr gadar that... maharaj is yeah yeah, yeah. They, they would give an example that you know even when the sage is called by their name they turn you know yeah yeah you said that yes. that means the ego is there the fundamental i thought is there without that that is not possible without that this interaction is also not possible so but yes you know once the once the awareness and the presence increases 
the the movement of i does get arrested like it is it does not the movement of i as i am this uh, i am that gets arrested uh, that's, yeah, yeah, it that's does not true. move beyond the point yeah, yeah. so true so true so true in that case so is it fair enough to say that even seeking is not done by us but it's seeking that something happens to us exactly because exactly itself seeking, wants to yes you never started there is no you who ever started oh, there is no me that's what i realized yes <laughs> so who's seeking who <laughs> nothing so... nobody is seeking nothing at yeah, all so true. It's, there is nothing to true. seek there is nothing to liberate from there is nothing to be known you are the pure knowing that is it that is advaita in a nutshell you are the pure knowing the unaffected witness the supreme mm-hmm. reality as nisargadatta maharaj would call so, so th- this is it actually so you have hit on the crux <laughs> no, no you're so true so true you're very true very okay true. so we'll take thank you question. so much thank you so much my dear. yeah thank you rajiv Yes, Chitra. Yeah, I mean, following the conversation you just had with yes. Rajiv, yeah, uh, to come to the realization that there is no one to search, there is no one to seek. You have to start obviously as the seeker. Yes. Right. Yes. So you there see, is, there is. I mean, we cannot just arrive at that. Yes. Yes. True. Very true. The seeking still will be done. right so that is right. the culmination point what i discussed with rajiv that is not the starting point even all the mahavakyas that we hear i am that aham brahmasmi right, right, right. this mm-hmm. they are the culminating points they they are the um, what do you call after after uh, a lifetime of contemplation reflection the sages gave that you know it is not yeah. the starting point problem with us is that we start taking it as a starting point the yeah. ego the illusory ego will will start an illusory seeking that is but natural it cannot be stopped yes. and again it is all being directed by the pull of the source the source's pull is there so your seeking it does not mean that you have to end the seeking it is not an implication of that because that would be an assumption you know that i know mm-hmm. right if yeah. you know auto, this process will happen spontaneously for you there will be times when certain things will happen or let's say maybe yes. a suffering will happen and we will seek so we never started yeah, the course. seeking we are never going to end the seeking but seeking will happen mm-hmm. because you know uh, i am forgetting the name of that uh, there is a there was a mystic uh bastad bastami something like that i'm i'm not i'm not sure mm-hmm. if i'm using the right name who said something like this that even though there is nothing to seek the seeking will happen uh, nobody has ever found right. anything without seeking so that is true yeah. so this interaction between us and you know your spiritual journey is a part of that yeah it's a part of that right so don't okay. try to stop the seeking otherwise that will be <laughs> doership <laughs> right the seeking yeah, like will said, stop yeah. yes seeking yeah. seeking will stop when it has to stop yeah true yeah okay chitra thank you okay okay so i think we can conclude today's session and uh, we can continue next week for more questions uh, i think there will be one talk uh, around wednesday in the evening and uh, then there will be one talk sunday uh, sunday talk will be most probably at my home so i don't know you um, all of you you are from different places but the online talks uh, i'll inform you on youtube and other channels so we'll conclude for now and i'll see you another time mm-hmm.